A tracheostomy is a hole made in a person's neck to access the trachea and facilitate breathing. A tracheostomy tube is placed in this opening to ensure it remains open. Patients that have a tracheostomy will require specific care to ensure this device continues to function properly and to avoid any issues during their hospital stay. This video will provide an overview of the tracheostomy tube placed at Trinity Health Livonia. We will discuss equipment that must be at the bedside at all times and provide an overview of the oxygenation system for tracheostomy patients. The tracheostomy tube that is placed at Trinity Health Livonia is the Shiley Flex. If a patient comes to the hospital with a tracheostomy tube in place from a different facility, it may be a different make or model, but tracheostomy tubes function the same with the same basic parts. However, Trinity Health Livonia does not carry compatible components for any trach tube other than the Shiley Flex. The Shiley Flex is a cuffed tracheostomy tube. Included in the package is the cuffed outer cannula, an inner cannula, and the obturator. The outer cannula is a flexible tube that will be inserted into the tracheostomy stoma and rest in the trachea. At one end is a flange. This holds the tracheostomy tube in place by supporting placement against the patient's neck. On the flange are printed some important measurements. On top of the tube opening are the measurements of the outer cannula. The inner dimension is 7.5 millimeters, the outer dimension is 10.8 millimeters, but from a tracheostomy care perspective, the most important measurement is the size of the inner cannula which is printed below the opening. This trach requires an inner cannula that is 6.5 millimeters. Coming from the flanged end of the tube is a small balloon attached to the tracheostomy tube. This connects to the cuff on the opposite end of the trach tube. It can be inflated by attaching a syringe to the balloon and injecting air. If the blue balloon is inflated, you know the cuff is inflated. If the blue balloon is flat, the cuff is deflated. You will only see an inflated cuff if a tracheostomy patient is on a ventilator. The cuff seals the trachea so that air delivered by the ventilator cannot leak out around the tracheostomy tube. So if your patient does not require a ventilator, the blue balloon should not be inflated. The obturator is a rigid plastic piece that is used for insertion of the tracheostomy tube. It inserts into the outer cannula and seals the end of the cannula with a rounded plastic tip that protects the trachea from damage while the tube is inserted. After insertion, the obturator is removed. The inner cannula is then inserted into the tracheostomy tube. The inner cannula is a disposable piece that fits inside of the trach tube. It can be easily removed and replaced to protect against obstruction of the tracheostomy. When fully inserted into the Shiley Flex, it locks in place when two raised bumps on the inner cannula fit into two openings on the outer cannula. Disposable inner cannulas also come individually packaged and are available in a variety of sizes. The inner cannula size should match the required size for each specific tracheostomy tube. Inner cannulas are to be replaced at least once per shift. This can be completed by either the respiratory therapist or the RN, and this process is demonstrated in a separate video. When a tracheostomy tube is in place in a patient at Trinity Health Livonia, there is a list of equipment that must be available in the room at all times. If something is missing, or you use an item, ensure that it is replaced as soon as possible. It is the responsibility of both the nurse and the respiratory therapist to ensure all necessary equipment is available at the bedside at all times. You will need a replacement tracheostomy tube of the same size, or if that is not available, of one size smaller than is present in the patient. This is in case of accidental decannulation or other emergencies where the tracheostomy tube may need replaced immediately. One to three disposable inner cannulas. Inner cannulas are replaced at least every shift. Both of these items can be ordered from Central Supply. You will need three suction kits from the pod rooms, a bottle of sterile water from the Pixis, a tracheostomy care kit, a yonker, split gauze, and trach ties which are all available in the pod rooms, and you will need to ensure the suction setup is connected and functioning, and have the basic PPE of a mask and eye protection available for any time you interact with the tracheostomy. The maintenance and use of these devices and equipment are explained in separate videos. There is a second collection of supplies that should also always be stocked for every tracheostomy patient. It is the tracheostomy go bag. Anytime the patient will be transported from the room, ensure they have their tracheostomy go bag with them. The go bag is a collection of supplies that should always be with the patient in case they have a respiratory emergency when they are away from the room. They should have with them an ambu bag, a full tracheostomy tube kit of the same size that is currently in place or one size smaller, and this kit must include the outer cannula, the inner cannula, and the obturator so that if it is necessary, a new tube can be placed quickly. They also will need a 10cc syringe so that the cuff can be inflated in the event that the patient requires ventilation. 
they will need a suction catheter, and gloves. These items can be placed in a belongings bag, and this bag should remain with the patient at all times while the patient is away from the room. Patients with tracheostomies that are not on a mechanical ventilator will likely have supplemental oxygen. This is delivered through a specific piece of equipment. The general supplies for a tracheostomy include a venturi setup attached to the wall oxygen unit. This attaches to a hose that connects to a collar that sits over the patient's tracheostomy. We'll start with the oxygen. Attached to the wall oxygen unit will be a venturi setup attached to a sterile water bottle. This device will control the amount of oxygen that is being delivered to the patient. It functions like a venturi mask. Room air is mixed with the oxygen delivered from the wall unit. You can control the oxygen delivery by rotating the blue collar around the base of this unit. This collar has markings to deliver 28%, 30%, 35%, 40%, 50%, 70%, or 100% oxygen to the patient by rotating the collar and lining up the markings with the notch above the nozzle. The amount of oxygen that is coming from the wall unit will need to be changed depending on the percentage of oxygen that is being delivered by the Venturi. The specific liters of O2 for this device are printed on the sterile water bottle that is always attached to the oxygen. Looking at the label on the bottle, you can see that when the Venturi is set to 28% oxygen, the wall oxygen should be set to 6 liters. 8 liters for 30%, 10 liters for 35%, and 12 liters for all higher percentages. To change the wall oxygen delivery, simply turn the knob on the wall unit. A small metal ball will float to indicate the amount of oxygen being delivered. The center of the ball represents the amount of oxygen being delivered. Do not measure from the top or bottom of the ball. Always measure from the center. A hose is attached to the Venturi setup that runs to the patient. Between the wall oxygen and the patient will be a small canister. This collects condensation in the hose before it reaches the patient and helps to minimize buildup in the airway. It should be positioned to hang below the hose in order for the condensation to fall into the canister. The hose is attached to a collar that sits over the patient's tracheostomy. It delivers oxygen to the trach like a venturi mask delivers oxygen over a patient's nose and mouth. The collar can be tightened or loosened, and one side of the strap has a snap to allow it to be easily disconnected. If a patient with an existing trach is admitted to you or transferred to you from another unit, inform respiratory therapy. We need to ensure all appropriate team members are involved in this patient's care. Work together to get the patient set up appropriately. Also, when accepting a trach patient, either as an admit, transfer, or just at the beginning of your shift, remember to always check that the appropriate supplies are available in the room for the patient. Never assume that supplies are present. They are there for emergencies always ensure that you are prepared for those emergencies. Tracheostomies require very specific care and understanding. It is important that staff feel comfortable with the equipment and procedures that are involved in the care of these patients. These procedures will be explained in detail in additional videos.